you've been going for some uh for some months now obviously don't share anything that um isn't going to be shared until december because we know <laughs> you're going to have a potential ruslan interview so you know i'm not gonna <laughs> right, say just, you're just gonna leak everything huh no no that's it that's it i said potential you know it could be anybody could be anybody you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah so, yeah but how yeah, you know, how's everything man you've disappeared yeah you know i've taken a break I've taken a break and I've been very grateful for this time, you know, away from the internet. I've been a full-time YouTuber for almost eight years, you know? Um, and so my entire life has been online nonstop and it just feels really good to have an opportunity to step away from all of that and think, pray, fast, spend time with my family and so i've really been enjoying that interesting now you don't have to share this or anything like that but is there a potential comeback or will that be released will that information be released in the future <laughs> bro you know um i'm praying about everything i'm allowing god to direct my steps you know and i have no i cannot confirm or deny anything but um yeah i'm enjoying life right now i'm enjoying the peace the quiet and i'm working just so people can understand i have been working a job in construction for the last four months and mm -hmm. i've been really enjoying that it you know it's it's something that you know i became a full-time youtuber and I, i've been making you know enough to support myself and once i got married and started having children enough to support them off of being a YouTuber. And there was a part of me that actually wanted to know what it would be like to work in manual labor and work with my hands and get dirty and work long hours. And now I'm getting a chance to experience that. And I really appreciate that experience. Yeah. And if you come back, you know, this is all going to make you a better man because a lot of YouTubers out there, and I'm not going to mention any names who really made it to the level that you made it, it's almost like as if they had everything handed to them. They're on another level. They don't know what it is to sweat. They don't know what it is to bleed. They don't know what it is. And the fact that you did this, the fact that you're doing this, right? If you come back, you now have both perspectives of life. Like now you know what it's like to really work hard. And now you know, I'm not saying that you didn't work hard with social media, but you know so yeah it's a different kind of grind most certainly to become a, a successful youtuber you're going to have to work hard um you're going to have to burn a lot of midnight oil but mm -hmm. and i did work a you know i i did work full time jobs before i became a youtuber but they were more like you know college jobs you know working in retail uh working in fast food and so this is my first <laughs> i feel like adult proper grown man job i've had outside of youtube mm. and yeah man it's uh it's been a, a very blessed experience uh, i really enjoy going to work every day you gotta wake up real early it's yeah let, let me ask you this uh because i did see you commenting so obviously we won't reveal any kind of new information or anything like that but um i will ask you this how do you feel about the current Christian climate, obviously, somebody like Marcus Rogers, who's trying to figure things out, and people are demonizing him and pretty much belittling him and doing all of these things, similarly how they did with you. Um, what's your view on that? Do you think it's toxic? How, how do you think the, the YouTube climate is with Christianity? Because for me, brother, it's been real toxic. That's why I barely upload nowadays, brother. So, yeah, know. you know, uh, there's so much I could say in regards to that. On one hand, I definitely think that fighting for the truth is incredibly important. You know, uh, not compromising on the truth is incredibly important. And so on one hand, I can respect people who hold to uh, what they believe is correct doctrine. I can respect them fighting 
for it because the mm -hmm. truth is important, right? Jesus is the truth. And so to deny the, tr the truth in a way is to deny Christ. And so I can respect that. But at the same time, my heart is sad for the entire state of the Christian community because it wasn't always like this, right? Mm -hmm. This, this confusion, um, the, the abundance of opinions, the abundance of teachers, this is not the church. That's not the, the system that was initially set up when Jesus instituted the church. It was a lot more unified, a lot more organized, a lot more clear on what truth is. And so it, it really is just sad. I, I, me personally, I just pray God has mercy on all of us and that, you know, his, his, when it, when judgment day comes, he will take into consideration the fact that we aren't living in the first or second or third or fourth century anymore. And that a lot of time has passed since the apostles and a lot of confusion has been spread throughout the culture of Christianity. And yeah, man, that's, that's really how I feel about that. Yeah, no, man, I, I definitely agree. I wonder how we got here where there's millions upon mil not millions, but thousands of denominations, right? And there appears, it's like gangs, right? Like, you know, you on your side, I'm on my side, and it's gang wars, you know? And it's unfortunate, you feel me? Um, I don't know if you want to share. Let me see, is this too much information? Kind of like, okay, I'm going to say this. I believe personally, Don, that becoming a Christian in the year 2024, 2023 is a nightmare. Why? Where do you start? If I'm a Christian and I become a Christian and I go on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, that's, bro, you, you're preaching to the choir. That was exactly the position I found myself in when I first became interested in seeking jesus you know i i wasn't brought to church by a friend or now i let me give my mother credit she tried her best with the information that she had and what she believed she was true and so i was brought to church all my life every sunday from as long as i can remember all the way up until i was 16. but i wasn't paying much attention and i didn't really understand it and you know and, and so when as an adult i i I had a desire to search for Christ. It was literally all I had was YouTube. You know, all I had was YouTube. And that is an, an, an incredibly it, unfortunate place to start when you're trying to discern truth because there are so many charismatic, intelligent sounding people that can use scripture to justify their positions and then when you are uneducated and uh, um ignorant of the faith that you're even getting into from a historical point of view it's very easy to be deceived and then once you're deceived you know other things get wrapped up in that deception such as relationships that you form with people within these uh whatever denomination you essentially by chance happen to fall into it's almost like a first come first serve kind of thing Mm. You know, if the first person that tells you about Christ is Baptist, you're probably going to end up being Baptist if it's Pentecostal, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, it, there are all kinds of things that complicate it. But, um, you know, all we can do is pray for mercy and do our best to try and, you know, help other people come to what we believe is the truth, you know. Yeah, let me say this, and this is why I think a lot of grace was supposed to be shown to you. And I and I've had great again, I'm not perfect, right? We've had ups and downs and things of that sort. But you are the perfect example of a person that became a Christian, and then you had free grace, you had Messianic Jew, then you had being under under the law, then you had what was it? Calvinism. Then you had uh, demonology doctrines, right? Which I don't know how to put a name on that, but you know, so 
you've had a lot of jumps and reason being you kind of come on the internet and you're overwhelmed with all of these abundance of doctrines. Some people have swag. Some people have intelligence, right? And I'm let, let me be very clear. I don't believe that the Messianic Jews are not saved or anything like that. I'm not even saying Calvinists are not saved. But what I am saying is that when you're hit with an abundance of Catholicism or everything, what are you supposed? I mean, I give God the glory. I became a Christian a little bit before the internet. You know what I'm saying? A little bit before the internet. And here we have this guy that's been manifesting the the whole time. And brother, you know, if you're going to say somebody's a false convert when they're genuinely seeking and you don't have any evidence, you put yourself in the seat of Christ, essentially, and you're choosing who's saved and who's not. Right? And so... That's when it gets dangerous because you you enter one of these doctrines and you have people saying it's false. Then you get to the other doctrine people are saying is false. Then so you're the prime example of what a Christian is going to be challenged with when they become a Christian. And that's unfortunate. It wasn't like that when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? And you know, Don, what is your opinion or some advice that you'd give? And obviously, we spoke about this on the phone. We don't got to mention names, but big Christian content creators or people that have entered Christianity so they don't end up making some of the mistakes that you made. How do you navigate this big? How do you trust any? What do you do? What is your opinion? Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate that question. And it's my prayer that if any other somewhat popular youtuber or influencer comes to christ that they learn from my mistakes and they 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 listen carefully to what it is that i'm about to say see one i i'm not too concerned about people trying to decide you know or judge whether or not i was a false convert i i think the life i left behind um is enough testimony to my sincerity you know, no one who has what I had on the internet in terms of, you know, a following and in terms of what comes with that kind of following, all you have to do is a little research to know what kind of, you no, know. Yeah, let me go on record, Don. Right? You're the first. You're the, the first big YouTuber because we know there was this other guy that was a free gracer, but that guy only gets like 3,000 views per video. So that yeah. white free gracer guy, I don't know what his name is. Uh, I mean, was, there are a lot of them. Like yeah, that. The, the free grace guy that was that was a prankster and then became. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but he wasn't as big as you were. So you were the first big person. There we go, Cassidy. There we go. You know, Cassidy's lucky to pull three thousand views. You know, I get more views than Cassidy nowadays, right? So he didn't really transition very well. But you're the first person that was huge on YouTube. Right, huge, possibly getting millions of views. You can look at the track record. Some of his old channels are still available to make the transition and still get hundreds of thousands of views. You were the pioneer to do that. And then obviously, other big YouTubers, other big YouTubers followed your footsteps. We don't got to say names, but you are the pioneer. So you pretty well, much started that. Well, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to start anything ironically i i just brought that up to say anyone who would you know judge whether or not my conversion was sincere um i would just say that i think that's not logical um considering what i left behind but nonetheless i, I should never have started teaching this is what i want people who if anyone ever is in my position but even if you, you don't have to be someone who's successful on youtube to heed from this wisdom the thing with me is I had a lot of popularity, right? Right. Millions of subscribers, you know, millions of views on videos, all of that. I felt this internal and external pressure to talk about Jesus because, you know, I, I converted, right? I, I started believing in Jesus. I believe that he's the only way to salvation. I started believing in heaven and hell. 
And so I felt like I had this responsibility as someone with a large audience to get the word out. But what I quickly found out is that it's impossible to talk about Jesus without talking about theology. Mm -hmm. And the, minute, the second you start talking about theology, you become a teacher. You have and, to. Yeah. And so what I would say, if I could go back in time and speak to myself from two years ago, because this summer marks two years of walking on this journey, uh, I would say, hey, man, God doesn't need you to start teaching right away. You know, God doesn't need you to start teaching right away. And um, he actually doesn't need anyone to start teaching for a long time. And the best advertising you can do for Christianity as a new convert is just living as a Christian, right? Loving your neighbors, repenting from sin. Uh, you know, this is the, if you want to advertise being a Christian, do that, you know, clean up your mouth, clean up your mind, um, and stand out in that way, uh, to the people around you. But man, it's such a, it's a, it's such a, a huge responsibility once you start trying to teach online and, and trust me, JP, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have started, but hindsight is twenty twenty, as they say. Um, yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah, it is interesting you say that, because as soon as you preach Jesus, well, once saved, always saved. Did he die for everybody? Is everything predestined? Um, did Christ do this? Did Christ do that? Is Jesus God? Is Jesus this? Trinity. Um, binitarianism. Modalism. Unitarianism. It's like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Like, whoa, like now I have to dive deep into these things, you know? Right. Whereas before, when I was growing up, you just preach Jesus and that's it. Now, I'm in no way condoning Unitarianism or anything like that. But what I'm saying is, is that when you come in, you know, you're going to be, you're going to get the questions. Oh, Don, can you lose your salvation? Hey, Don, is everything predestined? Hey, Don, did Jesus die for everybody? A Don is Jesus the Most High God. A Don, are we under the law? A Don, are we this? Are we that? And unfortunately, I mean, it's 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 tough. So let me ask you this, Don: What would you have done differently? Because obviously, you becoming a Christian, you said you wouldn't have preached the gospel or teached. Right. What would you have done differently? Well, I would have hoped that without me really you see that's the thing who we can't say exactly how things would have gone if we did something different because that's in the past now and there's no way to know how things would unfold and though just solely out of not wanting to ever be responsible for teaching someone something incorrect is the reason why I would want to go back in time and tell me from two years ago, don't teach. But at the same time, I appreciate where I'm at now. And I don't know how I would have gotten to where I'm at now had I not taken the exact path that I did. And so it's bittersweet for me personally. Um, but if I could speak to my younger self, and by younger, I just mean two years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, when he was like, OK, I want to understand this Christianity thing, I would have told him that he needed to go back to the beginning. Right. It, most people, even people who would like to pretend as if, you know, all of my theology came solely from reading the Bi Bible. I, I don't know if that's true for anybody. Most people are being influenced by teachers, whether it be at their local church, whether it be on the Internet, whether it be as a Bible study they attend, they are being influenced. And really, it's everyone subscribes to the Bible, even Jehovah Witnesses subscribe to the Bible. But at the end of the day, what we're it's a competition of interpretations. That's really what's going on. Who has the best interpretation of the Bible? And the answer really is so obvious and it's so clear, the people at the very beginning, because otherwise you would have to believe 
that immediately after the foundation. Yeah, uh, Don, you're, uh, you know, you're releasing a lot of information uh, that should not be released. Yeah, yes, you yes, asked me that. that. Yeah, yeah, keep that to yourself. And everybody, when Don comes forward and makes a video or does an interview, you will find out exactly what he believes. So, um, so we'll leave that. We'll leave that to the future. You know, God willing, Don will give you guys an update on what he believes. And, uh, you know, you will you will be excited to know what the deal is. So, you know, um, some guy says, shut up, JP. Let the man speak logic, not doctrine. Uh, JP censors talks. Yes, sir. I do censor. You know, this is going to be censored until uh, the information is ready to be released. So the brother said he wants to release information at a particular time. That information will be released then, not here. So that's that. Let me ask you this, Don. How's your relationship been with, um, and you don't got to share this or anything like that, but obviously, you know, you've been friends with people of other religions, such as Muslims and things like that. So, you know, uh, for somebody like, uh, the heck is this guy's name? Oh, man. Sneeko, yes, Sneeko, yeah. Him being a Muslim and you being a Christian that we will not reveal what kind. How has that dynamic been? Do you kind of evangelize, pray for him? How does that work? You being I don't a like, I don't like you make you see making it this uh every time you refer back to it, you know, we can't tell everybody, we can't tell. You know, all right, let me explain why there's a good reason for JP not wanting me to in this format say what brother don't release too much information don don't release brother you sometimes chill, chill, chill. i'm not going to i just so for people to know it's not because i'm trying to make like a uh, lebron james the decision you making it sound like bro like you know i'm taking my talents to roman catholicism like no it's not it's not that at all but um you know, just because of the history, because of the the personality that, you know, is online, I've been essentially teaching on all that. I, whenever I do say the direction I'm going in, I want the opportunity to explain it thoroughly and fully and, you know, be prepared to have that conversation because very serious conversation. And uh, and so I appreciate JP for not wanting to press the issue where that's concerned. But um, yeah, in, in terms of my relationship with uh, people who believe other things than what I believe spiritually, uh, pretty much it's, they're all good, bro. You know, I'm I'm not, you know, talking to Sneeko on the phone every day or anything like that. But, you know, um, he's on a journey just as I'm on a journey. And uh, just as we are all on journeys. And I, I pray that God has mercy upon him. And I pray that, one day he 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 sees clearly the truth of Jesus Christ and the faith of Christianity. Fun fact, man! You, yeah. you first, your very first debate as a baby Christian, <laughs> you had yeah. to take him on his his Razul. What's his name? The the guy, the the, the famous uh, Muslim guy. I forgot his uh, name. Uf, I Ufman. Think on, Sheikh Ufman. Ufman. Yeah, you yeah. had to take mm -hmm. Sheikh Ufman on. You you took on a whole squad like of five Muslims by yourself, and then Ruslan tried to get on to give you some assistance, and his connection was trash. Yeah, <laughs> Good day. yeah. You know, a lot of lessons learned, JP. That's all mm -hmm. I can say where that's concerned. A lot of a lot of you didn't do too bad. That's the funny thing. You didn't even do too bad. So that's the <laughs> well. I appreciate it. You know, I, I like to go down swinging. I'm that mm -hmm. kind of guy. But um, yeah, uh. The, yeah, so yeah, that's basically where I'm at with other people outside of the faith or, you know, who believe different things than I do, um, you know.